Hello everyone, welcome to another Bow to Bow video. As is known, not everything goes perfectly well when you're making a bow. So I'm gonna show you all the different things that I did in order to make this bow work out. This is the story of Phoenix, Pacific U Longbow. So for this specific U bow, I've gone ahead and drawn out the profile. So I start out with the center section. You always gotta mark your center first. Use a string from end to end to try to find your kind of your center of the whole bow. That way your string and your nox will you line up. I measured four inches out and one on and three below. That way when I'm holding the bow, I'll be shooting closer to the center of the bow, which gives you a little bit more performance out of the bow. Then four inches to kind of transition between this inch and a quarter to an inch and a half wide. Then I go about halfway on the limb and start tapering it down to a half inch knock. I need to get this bow thinned down a little bit because if you can't tell, this thing has a lot of deflex is what they call that. So it's bending towards the archer, which means that it's not going to have as much performance that way. And so if it was the other way, it'd be, it'd be great. It'd be a little hard to tiller, but it'd be great for performance. So I'm gonna have to straighten this guy out uh, just by heating him up, probably doing some boiling or something like that, and then bending it backwards on a form. But it's really hard to do that with a lot of wood, so I'm gonna get the general shape roughed out, and then we're gonna start working that. So I went ahead and used my bandsaw to cut this out. So next step is to go ahead and start tapering it down. We want it to be the thickest in the handle and then to thin out gradually. You could do this either using math to try to calculate it out what the thicknesses should be to taper it evenly. I'm going to mostly just kind of eyeball it, round it out. And one thing that's good about working with a stave is you have growth rings that you get to work with. So there's so many growth rings at the ends and um, what you're going to try to do is make it look like a feather as you taper it down you'll see the growth ring here and then you'll see it disappear as another growth ring goes down to be able to see the steps layering going down and that's a good indicator that you're going down or how much you're going down in your thickness so you want it to be about the even on both sides and we can already tell from the center. Um, <laughs> that limb is definitely a lot heavier. It's got a lot more wood on it. I'm gonna go ahead and clamp it up in my vise and get to work. There you have it. Limb started. I got the profile all cleaned up. It's looking pretty good, but this is a lot of deflex. I need to come down a hole five inches. The worst of it, I think, is in this limb here, which I'm gonna say is the top limb. So I need to heat this up and then take it on a nice firm surface and push it down. Probably even a little past that can straighten it itself out. So that's a pretty even curve there. If I was to make the bow just like this, which I could, I could just make the bow this way. I talk about performance of the bow when your bow is being shot, you want it to go as fast as it can from where it is being pulled to back to its original position as fast as possible. And if its original position is here instead of here, then it's not gonna go as fast. So if anything, you kind of want it to recurve, which is uh, what the Englishmen ended up doing later after they went around and they saw a lot of the other, the Turkish, the Hungarian, the other bows, that actually have a lot of recurve in them or they're shorter horse bows, that kind of stuff. So they ended up heating up the ends or when they were green and just bending them so they were back reflexed. And they were called a static recurve because they didn't do any work. But that's what I'm gonna have to do with this guy. Get this area heated up and then bend it back. All right, 
So I got it all set up. I've got my pipe here that I'm using as an extension so that the steam will come up from the boiling water here in through the pipe so I can get basically this entire top limb. And I have to jerry rig it as any way I can just to get it to sit. I'm trying to boil the whole thing or steam the whole limb so I can take it out and compress it. So I'm probably gonna give it about 30 minutes to do that. So this is one of the cutouts. As you can see, the steaming did a pretty good job of straightening it out. Now, is it not, it's not perfectly straight, but it's a whole lot better. All right, so I got the long tilling string on here. Let's uh, see how this thing looks. The bending is all happening in the middle. That's what I don't want. Same out here, so I need to thin those out. The limbs are still looking stiff. So I wanted to show you the feathering or the layering. So you can see here on the end, you got a layer of wood and then it goes down and down and down. As you can see, it also is tapering right here. So that's the kind of the idea of what you're looking for. You want to make sure it's going down in levels, but you want to be careful around knots. Sometimes they'll have a little bit more wood and that's okay. Just want it to be about the same thickness and the, the feathering is an idea of where you are. Got to exercise the, the wood a little bit. This gets at the memory set in for where the limbs are bending before. And then so it goes past that memory into the new set of wood. So it finds where it's strong, where it's weak. You don't want to spend too much time on a loose string. And I found that the true nature of a bow doesn't come out until you get it braced. So once you can get it that six or so inches past, so that's brace height, it's time to start bracing it. So we can brace this bow cut in temporary knocks and then we could tiller this bow. All right, so I got it low braced. It's about just shy of six inches, so it's about five, five and a half. We're 50 pounds at 23 inches. That's uh, it's pretty good. I think that the right limb could use a little bit more off right here. And that would probably balance it out just a little bit better. So that's where I'm gonna go next. Still not loving how this is bending out here. So just a little bit more. Probably get us just about right. Probably time to start thinking about getting some horn knocks on this. That all matches pretty well. So we're gonna go with that set. Gotta get the bow tips rounded out so it'll slip, fit into the slot there. Nice tapered entry. Nice and wide. Fit that with a five minute epoxy. I'll do this very nicely. Another technique you can use is put Sharpie on it. And then you can in here, press down, show where you're hitting, and you can go at it. I 
I got the horn knocks glued on and they're solid now. So they're good to go ahead and cut in string knocks and string groove. So I'm gonna do one on this one, one on the bottom and then two on top. And what that will do is it'll create one for the actual string and then one for a stringer. With that and then get right to the finished tiller. But we just need to lose a little bit of weight and make sure it's as even as possible. Okay, first thing, gotta measure out where I want my knock to be. So I'm gonna go from the <clears throat> center of the bow. So I go from center to center on the other end as well. I'm gonna go 36 inches. So overall, we're gonna be 72 knock to knock. It'd be about a 74 inch bow. Then I definitely recommend you got lots of different files you can use. Starting off with a little triangular bit. Probably you can get it started here. I'm going straight across on this side. Then you can go at it with a rod saw. It's really nice. Our knock cut. Nice, really nice start. All right, so I finished the top. You do the top knock. You want to come straight across this way and then you can round it down like that. Makes a very nice place for the string to sit. And then for the stringer one, you just need to do a nice little straight across one. Don't need to go very far on the sides. It's a little like that. And show you. Slip this over. Oh, it just sits so nicely. Now I might end up adjusting this a little bit so it's a little wider here to account for uh, the string going like this, but we'll check it. Because it's a long bow, it may not have a whole lot of movement there, so let's see. Should we get in the final tiller? This is at brace height, about six and a half, seven inches. About 55 pounds at 28 inches. Not bending a whole lot right in here. We'll work a little bit on that limb. Let's see if I can even that out. Get back up. So all I do when I'm taking off wood at this kind of point, I'm looking at the grain structure, the layers, and I can see where it might be possibly stiffer as well, um, just based off of what we did. And then I take uh, my cabinet scraper and I just scrape off a little bit. It doesn't take a whole lot, as you can see, to change that. Just a little bit of the layers, at least with Pacific U. I mean, every wood is gonna be a little different in how it reacts during tillering. Just because of how stiff it is or how stiff a certain layer is. Because wood is just that kind of uniqueness to it. And that's one reason why this is a, tillering is a, is an art. Not just a mechanical go through and get it cut out exactly and then it should be fine. It's, you gotta, you gotta work it out. Find the bow. Right. I think I got it about where I want it. But there it is, as far as I can go. 32. First time being shot, it's about a 30 inch arrow. Let's see how, see how it shoots.
<sighs> well, as often things happen with being a boyer, things uh, don't always go your way because the use day was starting to take the bend again that it had before. And I didn't like that because it was ruining the performance, lowering the poundage, all this stuff that I didn't really like. And so I'm like, okay, well, I see that there's a hinge closer to the handle. Um, maybe if I just heat that point up and bend it back uh, using some steam, then it would actually improve and be better and stay that stay good because there's not all, as much bending in the handle as there is in the limbs. Anyway, so I set it up in a pot of boiling water and let it go for 30 minutes. I was out in here in the garage working on another another bow and I looked, <laughs> came back inside after my, my timer went off and there was a little bit of smoke and the alarms in my head start going off and I was like, oh no. <laughs> And I go over and sure enough, there was no water left in the, in, in the pot. And therefore it was just heat coming up from there and the bow was uh, burning a little bit. And so I got this right here. Nice burn marks. Uh, as you can see, it's a little shiny. I put five minute epoxy in it. We're gonna let that cure overnight because we got some crackage going on in here but it's on the belly side. So I'm hopeful with the five minute epoxy and some cleaning up around it, we might be able to save this and I'll call it the Phoenix bow since it rises from the ashes. <laughs> My hope is that it'll still be a functioning bow. We'll find out tomorrow. Well, let's see if it survives. Reinforced it. Okay, we're at 20 inches. 40 pounds at 22. Okay, we're at 24, 26 pounds. I don't hear any snacks, crackles, or pops. 25 inches, 50 pounds. <laughs> That's scary. About as far as I can go with the scale on. Counts. 58 pounds. Counts. At 27. We'll take off the scale and we'll try it again. Do it, Daddy. I'm doing it. Do it, do it. Do it, do it. Yep. Okay, it's winded up to 27. To 28. So nine inches. Make sure. We're good? Yeah. Go on. You hear it? Yeah. No. Yeah. Good boy. <laughs> Holy cow. It's alive. There we go. All the way down to 31 inches. Yeah. So this bow yeah. is going to survive. How long it will survive? Yeah. I guess we'll find out. Yeah. Look at that though. Okay. <sighs> My heart can probably stop racing now. <laughs> yeah. Because it didn't break. Woo! <coughs> the Phoenix bow. There you go. Ew, now I just got to do the finish work. <laughs> I've sanded it up and it doesn't look too bad. You can see. <laughs> so I'm just got to put some finish on it. Use some uh, T coils, one of the things I really like to use. Just uh, let that soak on here and it'll be done. After all is said and done, here is Phoenix at full draw. Thank you for joining me on the journey of Phoenix, the longbow. I hope you enjoyed the video and you thought that the information was useful and helpful. And even though sometimes things don't go your way, with a little bit of hard work and some imagination, you can make an awesome, fully functional bow with a cool 
story.